All systems are go for launch. In five, four, three. Oh, I got the lag countdown. Launch! Release clamps! Yay, we're going! Trial by fire. The first flight to the Orion spacecraft. So, Bill, tell us the purpose of this mission. This mission is to test the viability of this spacecraft for human spaceflight. That is why this mission is unmanned. Uh, why are we on board then? Ah, we're Kerbals. We'll survive this. We always do. It's okay, Bob. He's right. We will survive this. This mission is primarily to test the launch, the orbit capabilities, and the re-entry capabilities of this spacecraft to make sure it is safe for humans. The Kerbals, we will be fine. Uh, okay. Well, Bill, tell us a bit about this rocket we're launching on, and also talk a bit about NASA and their Orion space mission. And do you think we will beat them? <laughs> of course, Bob, we will beat NASA at their own mission. We're better equipped, we've got more science, we're even smarter than them. Well, this rocket is the equivalent of NASA's Delta IV Heavy Lifter, and it can lift up to 27 tons into low Earth orbit. So I think what this rocket could do from Kirby. So this rocket is at the cutting edge of NASA's technology at the moment. Well, Bob, at the moment it is, but NASA are developing their own SLS or Space Launch System. This will be able to get them to the moon and back, and hopefully in the future to Mars or even further. So, Bill, you are saying that this mission is just the prelude to even greater things for NASA in the future of manned spaceflight and beyond. Do you think it'll be worth it, all the effort and... I am sorry to interrupt you there, Bob. We're in due for its booster separation. Boosters has separated. We are now at full thrust and continuing our gravity turn. Ah, where were we? Ah, yes, human spaceflight. The humans have the potential to go further. They have the potential to go as far as Kerbals have gone. And maybe even beyond, but they have to take the first steps. And safety is the first step. And that is the purpose for this mission. I have to agree with you there, Bill. NASA will not send any human into space until they know that every nut and bolt works correctly and safely. And that is why it has taken NASA so long to get to this stage, where they're starting to plan to send humans beyond the Earth's gravitational hold. You see, this spacecraft has to withstand a lot, especially if it is going to go on long journeys. Apoapsis at 100 kilometers has been achieved. Throttle has been zeroed. Yay, we're in space! Release the fairings! Ooh, cool, man! I have to agree with Jebediah there, Bill. That is a beautiful sight. Well, Bob, you ain't seen nothing yet. Aligning our trajectory with maneuver node for orbit insertion. This is where vidueting comes in handy to make things go quicker! Come on, faster, faster! Beginning orbit insertion burn. Pedal to the metal! Whoa, Jebediah, keep the rocket straight. We want to get into orbit so we can complete our mission. Okay then, Bill, tell us a bit about this part of the mission. Well, this part of the mission is quite simple. We get into low Kerbin orbit, then we go for one orbit, one revolution around Kerbin, and after that we boost our apapsis to 3,600 kilometers. We don't work in miles like NASA do. Come on, NASA, go metric. And after that, I assume we land on Kerbin, perhaps splash down in an ocean somewhere. That is correct, Bob, but first off we have to go through the Van Allen belts. Booster has achieved optimal altitude. Beginning separation sequence now. Ha! Ah, rocket engage! Into orbit we go! Okay, Bob, this is the final orbit burn. Once we're in orbit, we can plan our next maneuver node to get up to 3,600 kilometers. But as you previously said, Bill, first off we have to complete one orbit around Kerbin, then insert ourselves into a 3,600 km apoapsis. That is correct, Bob. We will complete one orbit of the spacecraft before venturing out further than any other human spacecraft has since the Apollo missions. And I suppose that is what makes this mission unique to other missions NASA has undertaken. You're right there, Bob. This mission will eventually lead NASA to take astronauts to an asteroid back to the moon, and even maybe to Mars. This is so cool, we're making history, we are part of history! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Jebediah is enjoying himself. Initiate and burn for 3600 km apoapsis. Well, you know Jebediah, give him something that goes fast, and he is happy. Okay then, Bill, now talk us through this part of the mission. 
Well, now that our burn is complete, we're going to go and travel through the Van Allen radiation belts. Radiation belts? Yes, a thick band of radiation that surrounds the Earth, held in place by its magnetic field. Won't that cause us harm? No, that will not harm us because Kerbals are immune to radiation. But it could potentially harm humans, that is why they're doing this test. To see if the shielding of the Orion spacecraft will shield humans from the deadly radiation out here. I love the radiation, it gives me a nice green glow. Well, Bill, you were right. I haven't seen anything yet. This view of curbing high up, seeing the entire planet in go is astounding. This view was last seen by Apollo astronauts, but perhaps one day another human will see the sight again. Or maybe a new world like Mars. Yes, Bob. It is strange to think that the current generation of kids might be the ones that eventually go to Mars. Maybe it's one of those kids that are playing KSB right now. That'll be the ones to land on Mars, like they have landed on Duna countless of times. You think they'll take me to go to Mars? I've been to every planet except Mars. <laughs> Don't worry, Jeb, I'm sure you'll still be around there, and I'm sure all the astronauts will have a copy of Kerbal Space Program on their PCs. Well then, Bill, tell us the next stage of this mission. Okay, Bob, we have travelled up through the Van Allen Belt. Now we have to do our deorbit burn and travel down through the Van Allen Belt. The orbit burns to make sure we enter the atmosphere and return to Kerbin safely. And when we return, we'll be greeted by everyone as heroes and given loads of snacks, yay! I have to say, Bill, Kerbin looks beautiful from afar, but it looks far more better when it's up close. I agree, Bob. So let's go home, shall we? Capsule separated. Preparing orientation for re-entry. Jebediah, the controls at your command. Don't worry, boys, this is going to be a smooth ride. Spinning capsule for stability no, and Jeb. re No, Jeb, you're spinning it on the wrong axis. Well then, Bill, it appears we have survived re-entry. What is next? How do we stop this craft? Well, Bob, we have three parachutes to stop our descent, but NASA will have two drogue chutes first to slow itself down to 100 miles per hour, and then it'll deploy its three parachutes which could cover an entire football field. And that will bring the Orion spacecraft to splash down safely on the Earth. And then I suppose the Navy will come and recover the spacecraft from the ocean. Yes, Bob. Well, guys, it looks like we're going to be the first ones to complete this mission before NASA. We're down! Splash down! Um, Bill, NASA has already tweeted that they've completed their Naraya mission. Oh, bugger! And I wanted to be first. This is a message for NASA. Congratulations on your successful spaceflight of the Orion spacecraft. We look forward to the future successes of the Orion spacecraft. And your future missions to take man to the planets and then to the stars. But don't forget the Gerbils! Thank, Thank you, you Nasser, and, and keep, keep on, on curling! curling.